In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to add custom CSS to system IO pages using the custom code module. Hi, I'm Alex, owner of Lover Fighter Writer, and if you find this video helpful, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and reach out to me if you need help with anything marketing related in your business. Now, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it is one of the three code bases that are present on most web pages. Now, there are many different code bases that you can use to create web pages these days, but most websites, especially most like WordPress websites and other websites built with website builders that have been around for a long time, as well as a lot of custom coded websites, use these three languages, which are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so HTML controls the basic structure and the content. For example, the text is in the HTML and the image is also called in the HTML. CSS or cascading style sheets adds things like color and visual effects, and in some cases, small animations. And JavaScript is used to add most of the functionality, like uh, adding a email form. And with System.io, which is the landing page builder I'm showing here, and by the way, I'll put a link in the description where you can get a copy of this landing page if you want. So if you already have a System.io account, then just click the link and it'll load this funnel into your account. And if you don't have a system account yet, you can still use the link and you'll just have to sign up for an account and it's free. And then you'll have this funnel in your account as well. And because System.io has a very good and user-friendly website builder, which looks like this, you don't need to use a lot of custom code. In fact, you don't need to worry about the HTML at all. And you only need to use custom CSS or JavaScript if you want to add some visual aesthetic or functionality that isn't present in their website builder. And they actually have a decent amount of options for customizing your assets built right into this website builder. So I haven't had to use very much custom CSS when I'm building system IO landing pages. However, when you want to get something just so, or you want to add a specific effect, then you will need to use custom CSS. And it can be really frustrating if you don't know how to do it. But when you do know how to do it, it's actually pretty easy. So even if you don't know how to program or code at all, you can learn how to use custom CSS to customize your website. And so if I click on this image right here, it'll open up all the options that I have for it over here. And so you can see I can easily control the image size using that slider. I can control the alignment with these buttons. I can add an overlay color if I want. I can control the margin here. I can add a border. I can blur the image just with that slider. And I can add a couple of different types of shadow like this. I can even add a delay before displaying the item. So that would mean that it would load in after a couple seconds instead of right away. And I can select whether I want it to be visible on all devices or only on desktop devices or only on mobile devices. So those are all really great features, which if you were building a custom website or a basic WordPress website, you might need to custom code them or you might need to use a plugin or something like that. Whereas with system, they're just built right into it, which is great. However, there's a lot more that you can do with CSS that is not included there. For example, you can see that this image is semi-transparent, aka translucent. And I'll just blow it up a little bit more there so you can see better. So you can see this is semi-transparent and that's not because of any of these options over here. That's because of this custom code block that I added right here. And so this was a little bit confusing to me because if you go to settings on the page, they have uh, edit header code and edit footer code where you can add custom code there. And it says you can add CSS and usually you would put custom CSS in the footer. So that's what I tried first and it didn't work. It didn't matter how I formatted the code. It just kept showing up at the bottom of the page and not actually being implemented. And then I did a little bit of research and I realized that the way that most people are doing it is like this. And so basically you come over here into your elements section. Uh, when you're selecting new stuff to add, you have blocks and you have elements. And down at the bottom, there is a raw HTML block, which is basically just a custom code block. And what I usually do is I add the custom code or the raw HTML block directly below the item that I want it to affect. And I put it in the same row. That's not necessary. I think you could probably just put one raw HTML block at the bottom of the document and put all of your CSS in there. But I'm usually not using a ton of custom CSS. And so it's just kind of easier to keep it organized this way. And so just to show you how it works, I'll drag one of these out here, even though I already have one down there. And so you can see that goes right in there and it starts off with uh, some HTML in there. So if I, if I click on that and then I go to edit code, 
And then you can see that it has this uh, HTML code, which is why it says system IO. So I just need to remove that. And then I put my custom CSS in here and hit save, or I can hit discard changes and, and then it'll be saved. And so I'm just gonna delete this one because I don't need it. And I'll show you in the one that I already added. So here is my raw HTML block. And then I go to edit code. This is what we would typically call inline CSS because these style tags at the bottom and top are allowing me to put CSS into the page via the HTML. You probably don't need that level of information if you're just trying to figure out how this works. But the only thing that you really need to know is that when you're putting CSS into a block like this, you need to have the style tag at the bottom and the top. And this code editor will actually help me write it. So if I do the pointy bracket and then I type style, it'll suggest it and then I can just hit enter. And then when I close this with the other pointy bracket, it adds the closing tag for me. So that makes it really nice and easy. And then I can just hit enter. And then I need to add the selector class. And I'll show you how to find that. And then I add these types of brackets. And then I put the CSS that I want to affect it right in here. And so you can see that uh, I've used the selector class from that image. And then I used the CSS code to reduce the opacity. So I just said opacity colon and then uh, 0.5 puts it at 50% opacity, which is why you can see through it. And the way that I got that selector class is that you can see with this code block, uh, it has an ID attribute right here, and you can just click to copy that. And every element on this page has one of those. So if I go to the image, scroll down, then I can copy its ID attribute just by clicking right there. And then if I go back to the code block and I say edit code, um, then you can see that uh, this is the same right? It's the same as that one right there, because that's how I got it the first time. And this is just how CSS code is typically formatted. You need to have these kind of curly brackets. And, uh, and so if you, if you want to actually learn how to use CSS overall, then you'll learn how that works. If you're just getting started and you're just trying to figure out how to do something specific, then there are two really good websites that I use for help with this stuff. Uh, one is W3 schools, which looks like this. And you can see in the left menu here, they have all these different CSS tutorials that show you how to do everything. I actually, I couldn't remember exactly what the language for the opacity looked like. I, like I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be transparency or opacity or what it was. So I just quickly looked this up and it shows it right there. And so I can just copy and paste that. And W3Schools is really good for learning the basics of a lot of different code bases. It also has pretty good stuff related to HTML and JavaScript. So if you want to get kind of a beginner web development, web design understanding of code, then it's a good place to go. And the other website that I really like for CSS stuff is CSS Tricks. Um, you can see they have all these different guides and they also have videos and articles and, and CSS Tricks is where I typically go for more complex stuff. When I'm trying to figure out how to do something advanced with CSS that I've never done before, then a lot of the time when I start Googling stuff like that, I'll find CSS Tricks guides and they're really high quality. So those are two places that you can easily learn CSS and get the code that you can copy and paste if you just want to do something specific. And if you actually want to learn coding or learn programming, uh, there's a website called Free Code Camp, which is really good. It has interactive tutorials and it's free to use. So if you really want to learn programming, that's a good place to start at Free Code Camp. Um, but if you're just looking for CSS that you can copy and paste and learning how to do specific things, then CSS tricks and W3 schools are really great. And so I'm going to come back to my editor here and I'll just hit save to make sure that that's good. And so you can see the image is still at 50% transparency. So I'll just hit save changes right here and then go back to my front end. And now when I refresh this, the image should get bigger and become uh, semi-transparent. There we go. Oh, and it looks like I, I left a shadow on there somewhere. Let's see, what was that? Yeah, I left the soft inner shadow on. So now I'll just reduce the image size back to about what it was. And I will delete this code block. So I don't really want that to be like that. And then hit save changes again, and then refresh this. And it's right back to being the way it was. So remember, you can use the link in the description to get a free copy of this lead generation funnel. And you'll also get a free account for system when you do that if you don't have one yet. And if you have any specific requests uh, for tutorials on how to do specific things with custom CSS, leave a comment. Let me know because I like playing around with CSS and some things are a little bit more difficult than others. So if you're having trouble with something, feel free to let me know. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.